Motorcycles and peer pressure. Let's talk about that. That's right guys, motorcycles, peer pressure, they go together like white on rice. And here are some prime examples of peer pressure situations you will commonly see when riding a motorcycle and what to look out for. And these are definitely examples of things you should avoid. But first and foremost, I just want to say a massive thank you to you guys for watching the videos, commenting and subscribing. Got a lot of love on the last video. That was awesome to see. Anyway, jumping forward because I got rained on, which is never fun, especially when you have camera recording equipment attached to your bike and your helmet. Let's jump straight into it and go with number one, which is going to be one of, if not the biggest things you're going to see when it comes to peer pressure on bikes. And that is that you need to get the biggest bike you can get your hands on. I'm telling you from experience, you do not need to go out and get yourself a thousand cc bike with no experience or in general anyway, because if you get one too early with no experience, you're going to utterly hate it. I can tell you that for free. All you're doing is holding on to a beast. You're terrified to ride the thing and you're just up in the ante of never making it home. And even if you're not new to riding, getting a bigger bike doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make you happy. It's more about comfort, style and what you enjoy. Because if I'm being honest, there's a limit of diminishing returns when it comes to power. I would say something like this, 120 horsepower is probably the upper echelon of what you need on the street. And even that is overkill. I mean, for example, if you pay attention to my RPMs here, if you guys can see it, I never really reach up here straight into the crazy power band and where all the power is, unless I really want to lose my license. I mean, even in second gear, look, And that wasn't winding on like fully 100% as quick as I can. That was slowly riding it on. You might see that and go, that's what I need. I'm telling you, you don't. I would much rather go back to my 300cc sometimes, my MT-03, and peel all the gears out and get to the same speed, but have more fun. Whereas this thing, I'm constantly holding it back. So I don't know about you guys, but holding back a powerful machine is pretty lame to be fair. So with that being said, don't feel the need to go out and get bigger bikes to match your buddies because you'll be in a never ending game of cat and mouse. And when does it stop? When they start making 2000 CC super bikes. So contrary to what other people might tell you in other aspects of your life, don't let people tell you that size matters because when it comes to the motorbike game, that's a flat out lie. Oh, here's a good one. How many times have you pulled up next to someone or had a kid try to get you to rev your bike, do a wheelie, race, or you've pulled up at the traffic lights next to some broccoli haired twiglet in a Honda Civic trying to get you to race them. Don't fall to these pressures. This is a stupid game and you're going to end up dead quicker than needs be. And I'm telling you this, if you think I am losing my life to some 20 year old neck beard just so I can beat them in a 0-60 pool, you are on another planet. But honestly, this is a trap that everybody falls into at some point. Just yesterday this happened to me. I was at some traffic lights and there was a girl in a Audi A1, a little tiny, I don't know what they are, 1.6 litre thing. And she wouldn't let me pass in this gap. And I was like, oh, here we go. So when the lights went green, she absolutely floored it. So I couldn't get through and she pulled over right to the side nearest to the traffic. So I couldn't squeeze through the middle. Anyway, we got to the highway because that's where we was going. And she decided to floor this thing as much as she could. And I just wanted to see how far she would push it. And she got to about 160 kilometers an hour, which is pretty insane. But you think about it. How many times would you just try and beat that person just to prove a point? It's so dumb. Like, I'm not telling you guys what to do here. I'm just pointing out things that are very common when it comes to bikes, because I've fallen into this a lot. I've pulled up next to other bikes and they've teared off the line and I've gone, not today, mother flipper, because we all have that innate ego built in us. But if you can help it and you can try and remember and rein it back, remember ego will kill you. And for what? But like I was saying, I'm pretty much 34 in about four weeks. We see, gotta learn to balance boys. But anyway, back to the, the broccoli heads. As a 34 year old, well I will be in a month anyway, a 34 year old guy, all I'm saying is it's not wise to try and show off to someone who's probably half your age. Now, if you're a lot younger watching this, even more reason for you to pay attention to what I'm saying, because like I said, I'm not telling you what to do, it's just advice. It took me to about 28, maybe 30, before I started realizing that I'm not invincible. So for your own benefit, don't race these idiots. Don't let people and outside factors tell you otherwise. Yeah, we can get through here. Yeah, boy. And let's just jump into number three. And this is actually pretty good. This is more of a uh, social stereotype, to be fair. And that's pretty much how you dress. 
Now I know I probably look like I've purposely matched my little camo looking bike to the jacket and I've got two of these things if you've noticed I've got a hoodie as well. They're both camo, that's just sheer coincidence. But yeah what I'm getting at is that you should wear a certain dress code. I mean if you think about the Harley Davidson kind of riders, you go and get your vests, you roll up your jeans, I don't know what it is you guys do, grow a beard longer than Narnia. The same goes for adventure dads in fluorescent colours and sport bike riders that look like they're going to a BDSM convention. And we all have that like main character syndrome. Me, you, that person, this guy here. You think about any other person you just drove past, like that guy I just pointed at, these guys here. I'm never going to remember these guys in a million years, ever. I'm going to forget about them in about now. I've already forgot what the guy looks like. That's the same with anything, especially this whole topic of this video. Like peer pressure is just other people putting their projections onto you. Just do what you want, dress how you like, and enjoy being on one of these things. Hey man, life's worth living dudes, and especially if you're gonna be living life on a bike, who cares what all these people who are stuck in traffic think. Oh man, can you guys see that? It says stop recording. Camera speed is too low, too slow. Stupid thing. And while this thing's deciding whether or not it wants to work, let's end it on the reason. There's peer pressure for you to know everything about bikes and that's a flat out lie. You don't even need to know the bare basics when it comes to maintenance on a bike. You don't need to be a damn mechanical wizard to own a motorcycle. That's what garages and mechanics are for. Sometimes people ask me stuff and I have no idea. I'm not a mechanical genius. I know what I know and I don't what I don't. And that's a prime example here. I do YouTube videos, so if someone asked me an opinion and I answered every single one as if I knew it, at some point your bluff is going to get called. So it's in my favour just to be honest. If I don't know something, I don't know something. And that is exactly why I leave this little thing up here saying comment your suggestions on what you think I should do next video on. Because if I have any relevancy in that topic or I understand it, I will do a video in that. So don't stress if you can't change your brake fluid or do an oil change. Just pay someone to do it. If you want to save some money, there's always YouTube, learn how to do it yourself. So what do you guys think? Let's uh, get a comment discussion thing going in the comments below and let's put some ideas of peer pressure situations that you don't need to get yourself involved with because it's all a farce, it's all a bit of a lie, it's a scam. Pretty much do whatever you like, don't worry about what other people think, life is too short. I know that's not revolutionary news, but it's always nice to hear once in a while. Right guys, as I said at the beginning of the video, thank you very much for watching, subscribing, commenting, showing some love. I very much appreciate it. I won't drag this bit out too much, but I will be upping the production and the video content as the weather gets better. And that's about it. Peace.